Hello guys and welcome back to Engineering Hack, where we try to solve engineering problems in a way that's hopefully easy to understand. Today we're tackling a comprehensive problem on flat plate uh, situation for heat and mass transfer, in which we have a difference in temperature between the surface of this plate and the fluid going over it. This is a question that involves you know, different parts of the plates, different understandings of the different possibilities surrounding you know, the interaction between the flat plate and the fluid and the thermal boundary layer. The problem statement reads, water at a temperature of T equals 20 Celsius in one atmosphere flows with a velocity of 3 meters per second over a flat plate 0.5 meters long. If the plate is 0.6 meters in width, and the surface temperature is 40 degrees Celsius, determine the following. A. The local heat flux at x equals 1 centimeter. B. The heat rate over the laminar part of the boundary layer. C. The local heat flux at x equals L, that is, the end of the, boundary, uh, of the plate. D. The heat transfer over the whole plate. And E. The transfer in the turbulent boundary layer. And as a tip, it's given that the total heat transfer equals the lambda portion in the laminar one plus the portion in the turbulent one. All right, so let's start by looking at what we have here in the description. First thing, this is water, all right? So this is the fluid. So we're going to be grabbing properties for water. It's very easy for us to get used to using air, 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 or something else, and then we forget when the, this thing changes. So this is water. Second, second thing, uh, one atmosphere. So we're, we're good to grab, you know, the density or the kinematic viscosity as is from the table. We don't have to worry about that. That's great. What else? Uh, we know the area of the of the plate, and we know that the plate is hotter than the fluid, right? So if my T infinity here, the water here is 20 Celsius, and my T S for surface or T W for wall or T P for plate, doesn't matter, is 40 Celsius, then we know that the energy is going to be leaving the plate and going into the fluid, right? Okay, what else? We are to determine the local heat flux. Heat flux, that's lowercase q, right? So given in watts per meter squared, so that's what we're looking to find, and specifically at one centimeter distance, right? So this is, if you got, this is my x here, as you can see from the drawing, so this is, you know, at a distance of one centimeter, one centimeter, from the leading edge, right? The leading edge is the place in which the fluid and the solid find each other for the first time in the direction that the fluid is traveling. So if you hear. Uh, at that point specifically, this point specifically, what is the heat flux? So to do that, we need to first find, obviously, what is the heat transfer coefficient at one centimeter, and then we can find heat flux. Then, the rate of heat over the laminar part of the boundary layer. So this is, you know, rate of heat. We know that's given, that's our uppercase uh, Q, and that's in watts, right? So that's what we're looking for. And we're looking at for that for the... Um, for the laminar portion of it. So I'm not sure yet because we haven't done any calculations, but it seems like, it seems like from the problem statement, it seems like if I'm looking at my boundary, my sorry, my plate, you know, from a different angle so that I can see the, the full area, this plate has a, what's the length of it? It's 0.5 meters in length. So 0.5 meters in length and 0.6 and 0.6 meters in width. So it looks like there is a portion of this, there's a portion of this plate that is laminar, and a different portion that is turbulent, right? That is turbulent flow is going over it. Because we know this is, we talked as if it were you know, part of the plate, but this is actually in reality um, the behavior of the fluid as it's going over the plate, right? As it's traveling over the plate. So it's nice and laminar down here, and then it gets to these, this blue part, and I'm just guessing for now, it becomes turbulent, right? So if that's the case, then they're asking in part B, what is the total heat in this yellow part here, right? From my, my assumption drawing there. C, the local heat flux. So that is, again, heat flux, again, lowercase q. But now, instead of being at one centimeter, we want at L. And L, in this case, is the length, which is 0.5. So that's going to be 0.5 meters. So what is lowercase q at 0.5 meters. That's the question, and this is the laminar. Then D, the heat transfer over the whole plate. So now, I'm not interested just on this yellow area here, now I'm interested in the whole plate, right? So in the whole 0.5 by 0.6 area. That's my interest in part D. So 
if this is the case, we already know it's going to be a mixed situation, so that's what we would use. And the heat transfer, that's going to be uppercase Q, right? Uppercase Q. I'll just put hole. Okay. And then finally, what is the heat transfer? Again, uppercase Q in the turbulent boundary. So uppercase Q in turbulence. And that will be my blue area in this drawing that I made. Right? But we still need to be sure that this is the case because it might just so be that we calculate Reynolds and Reynolds critical turns out to be here, so therefore that will not, it will be all yellow, right? But if it's indeed a mix, then our Reynolds is going to be somewhere between um, 0 and 0.5. Okay, so first things first, we need to find the uh, properties, right? The properties of water, so the properties of water at what temperature? Not 20, not 40, right? But we date, take the average one between the two, the, the film temperature or the bulk temperature, so that we can find properties. Why is that? Because we know water is coming in at 20, but it's going to be heated up. We know that for, beforehand. So because of that, what we generally do is we take the average between the two, as engineers, that's 100% acceptable. If you need more precision, then you'd have to do step by step to see how your um, water is changing temperature as it goes over. So I'm interested in properties at 30 degrees Celsius. What, do I, what am I looking for? I'm looking for density. I'm looking for the dynamic viscosity. I'm looking for Prandtl number because I'm going to relate this to um, heat transfer. And I'm looking for conductivity. Those are the things that I need to be able to continue with this problem. And here, this is a snapshot of the table, we're looking at properties for water, and we have in Celsius, not in Kelvin like the air table, and I'm interested in this guy, this guy, this guy, and this guy, right? You will note that we don't have, unfortunately, because this is a table in Fahrenheit, unfortunately, but we don't have it in 30 precisely. That means we're going to have to interpolate between those two guys there to be able to grab the um, properties that we're after, uh, and that's exactly what I did. So, you know, I grabbed, let me just highlight this, so... My properties are going to be between those values there, and I did, as per usual, my little table here, I can relate the 26.67 Celsius with the 32.22 Celsius, looking for the 30 Celsius. If you don't know how to do interpolations, there's a video here that uh, explains to you what interpolation means, and there is a second video that tells you how to do it in different ways, whether by hand, calculator, or doing a spreadsheet online. Um, after my density, which is 995.8994.9, and I want to know the interpolation for the 30. I'm after the dynamic viscosity, which is 8.6 times 10 to the 4, minus 4, 10 to the minus 4, and then 7.65 times 10 to the minus 4, and I'm looking for the interpolation there. Next one, I need also my conductivity, conductivity, and I'm going to run out of space here, so let me go ahead and copy this into, into layers. Really just needed this first column, not these two guys here. Um, what else? Next, conductivity, conductivity is next, and then we have 0. 0.614 and 0. 0.623. And then finally, print up number, which is 5.85 or 5.12. Okay, so I've interpolated here, but I'll, you obviously, you don't have to do this. You can uh, grab this off a um, spreadsheet that already has 30, that will be fine, or use a software, when I'm not software, but a, a website, I'm about to show you a database. But you know, for your exams, you're not going to be able to rely on these things, so you're probably better off learning how to grab uh, properties from the table that's given to you, which is this one here. Uh, and then interpolating, what did I find? What did I find when I was interpolating? I found 995.3 here. I found 8.03 here. I found 0.619 here. And I find obviously 5.75.41. here. So those are the properties of water that I'll be using. Now, just to show you, uh, one thing that you can do when you're doing this and you want to be sure you're you know, not completely off is you can go just to a website such as engineering toolbox or something like that. And here I'm just looking at um, inputting my temperatures so 30 Celsius and I just press calculate dynamic water viscosity. It gives me these values here. The one that we're going to have to use to be able to eliminate the other units right, to calculate Reynolds and whatnot is kilograms per meters per second. And you note that this here is giving me, there's, you're not going to find 
this, but you have it in Pascals, and you know we can convert Pascals into Newtons per meter squared, and we can convert Newtons into kilograms times meters per second squared. So you know we can find our way back, and that's going to be that's going to be it right there, right? So one, two, three, four, seven point ninety seven times ten to the minus four, and we got eight point oh three, so very very close, right? So all good. If you use the, the value that I found closely relates to this one, that's what I'm trying to show you. And there's also got something else. Oh, here it is. Same website, looking for Prandtl number, and straight off liquid water, 30 Celsius, 5.43. We interpolating, we got 5.41. So all good there too. Where's my Prandtl? Here, 5.41. Okay, brilliant. Now let's see what we have. Let's grab our Reynolds. Let's find out what we have. So I'm looking. I'm going to find Reynolds at the end of my plate, right? So Reynolds L, L for the length of the plate, and that's just going to be density times velocity times the L in this case, the characteristic length divided by dynamic viscosity. 900 will work the values. 995.3 times uh, 3, was it, the velocity? Yeah, 3 times um, 0.5 meters in length this plate has, and we're dividing this whole thing by the 8.03 times 10 to the minus 4. Brilliant. And then what we get out of here, we got Reynolds equals 1.6, approximating it already, times 10 to the 6th. And this is greater than our Reynolds critical, right? Which is 5 times 10 to the 5th, or the flat plate, which indicates to us that this is a turbulent flow. So indeed, indeed, as our, where is the drawing? As we grew here, what happens is at some point, at some point, there's a conversion from laminar to turbulent because at the end here, at the end, when I calculate the Reynolds at the very end, that is turbulent. Where does it convert? Well, I don't know. We can find out, right? So we know that if we know our, our Reynolds critical is 5 times 10 to the fifth, so that means that if I multiply the density by the velocity, leave x as an unknown and divide this by the viscosity, I can find what is the point at which it changes and becomes a turbulent flow. And we do that. I got approximately 0.1345, that's in meters, so that's going to be about 13.45 centimeters. So that means that as we're going here down this plate, right, in the first um, about one-third down the way, it becomes turbulent, and then the rest of it is going to be turbulent. Okay, so now we can be sure. All right, with that knowledge, now we can start to answer the questions. Now that we understand what's going on, we know there will be a, there's going to be a turbulent part, a laminar part, and we know where it converts. Now we can go ahead and try to solve things. First question, what is the local heat flux at one centimeter? Well, one centimeter is going to be 0.01 um, meters, which means it's definitely going to be here in the laminar part of it, right? We are sure of that. So because, so we can say it like this, because uh, one centimeter is equal to 0.01 meters, which is smaller than our x critical, that we just found to be 13 centimeters, right? Uh, we know that the, how can I put this, the uh, regime at 1 centimeters is laminar. Okay, so that means that now I need to find the proper equations so that I can find what's my game plan. Game plan is I need to find muscle number so then I can find the convective coefficient with that I can find my heat flux. Right? So I need to find a proper equation for this, and I'm looking for an equation that is for laminar flow and for a Prandtl that's greater than 0.6 and for a flat plate, obviously. And these are, you know, our options. We talked about these in previous problems. You can check them out here in the channel too. Um, you just this is horrible. Six, six, four. Okay, and these are all, as you can see, average average muscles, right? We're looking for a local muscle, a specific one. So and for laminar, right? So it's going to be very similar to this one, if you guys recall. It's going to be the 332. So it's just it's just double the other one. So, and again, you don't need to memorize these things. You just need to know how to find them, right? So we know that this one here. Okay, so I just have this one. So we know this one here is for a laminar flow, um, for a flat plate with a panel bigger than 0.6, which is our case, and for a constant plate. So that means our plate does not change in temperature. Unless something is said about constant heat flux or something like that, then um, 
we have to use the constant heat flux equations, the one that relates, you know, T infinity and the T wall or T wall uh, average. If nothing said about that, forget this one. We're dealing with the isothermal plates. So this is the one I'm going to apply, and that means that my nozzle, and this is again local nozzle, right? So this is specifically at the location of x equals one centimeter. Will just be three, three, two times Reynolds at this location. Reynolds at this location to the half times Crandall to the third. Now I don't know the Reynolds at one centimeter. We haven't we haven't calculated that because we didn't you know didn't need that. But we're sure it's going to be uh, laminar. But we need that number to be able to move on. So let me go ahead and do Reynolds at x equals one centimeter. That's just going to be the what is it the density 995.3 times the free stream velocity three meters per second. Then the one centimeter right, which is 0.01 in meters, and the viscosity which is eight. 3 times 10 to the minus 4. This gave me 110, no, 112 approximately. Uh, no, no units. Please check the units on this. I'm not going to check in this video because it's going to be too long already. I might have to break it into. And with this number, we can now go into. Oops, my, my apologies. Uh, I got this to be 3, 37, 37, 1, 8, 4. The other one is the, the nozzle that I got afterwards. Okay, so now with this number, what we can do is probably should do this. Continue here. Okay, so this means that now all I need to do is 37, 184. I need to have to do this to the one, the square root of that, and then this is 5.41, and I'm 41, and I'm doing that to the one third, and then this is the one that gave me the 112 that I put before, so 112.4. Again, no units. There are no units for Prandtl, uh, for Prandtl, no units for Reynolds, and this is, I mentioned this, so all good. Now, finally, we know that Nussel, we know that Nussel is just the convective coefficient times the characteristic length, in this case, Rx to the one centimeter, for one centimeter, and the convectivity. So that means that if I want to find what is the local heat transfer coefficient at x equals one centimeter, I just need to do my Nussel at one centimeter, right, times the conductivity divided by my x. So in this case here, 112.4 times conductivity is 0.619. And I'm dividing the whole thing by one centimeters, which is 0.01 meters. And this gave me 6,956.77. I keep, kept going, so let's go approximate this to 69. Five, seven, and that's going to be in watts per meter squared per Kelvin. This is where watts per meter, watts per meters per Kelvin come from, and this is where the additional meters. All right. So with that, we found the local heat transfer coefficient. Now, this is the final stretch. We are after heat flux. We know Newton's law of cooling says it's just going to be H A delta T. So therefore, if I just want Q over A, which is our local uh, our heat flux, I just need to do H delta T. In this case, let me just do one extra step here just to remind everyone this is only for x equals one centimeter. So that's gonna, only going to use my coefficient for x equals one centimeter times delta t. Okay, so that's simply put 6,957. Uh, the plate was at 40 and the, uh, the water was at 20. So that's just a difference of 20, which gives me about 1,000. Let's just do like this, try to leave it in scientific notation. Might be the easy thing if watts per meter squared. Okay, so that's the answer for part one. So do that, or obviously 139 kilowatts per meter squared.